Hello, it's an honor to be standing here with you today. My name is Karina, and let me take a moment to introduce myself. I'm a woman, I'm deaf, I'm many things. I am also, and get ready, I'm gonna say the dirty P word, a pacifist. It was scary to out myself as a pacifist. And I'll talk a little bit more about that later. But before I talk more about pacifism, I want to talk about war. I couldn't find an appropriate sign for pacifism, so I will be fingerspelling it throughout my presentation. War is a word that invokes heroes on the battlefield, sacrificing, soldiers dying. Everyday Americans sign up to serve our country. The U.S. Army promotes on national TV. Please sign up. My Facebook news feeds has millions of posts about honoring our fallen soldiers and pictures of American flags. A few weeks ago, I was even shocked and cried reading about a soldier returning home to his beloved dog. I am so proud that our fellow soldiers have that patriotism. Growing up in school, I was always taught to look up to these individuals as heroic and, and performing heroic acts of patriotism. But I couldn't separate war in my head as something terrible and something heroic. Someone who is a pacifist would struggle with that. We have to support war to be a patriot, but it really took a long journey for me because you can, in fact, be a pacifist and a patriot. I want each one of you to do me a simple favor. Keep this in mind. What's the first thing you think of when I say the word pacifist? It's the first image. I asked that exact same question of other students here on campus and other answers that I got commonly were pacifists are Quakers, hippies, or someone weird. Many modern day pacifists like myself don't fit the um, ideology of being a Quaker. I'm not a hippie. I might be a little bit weird. I can admit that. But that doesn't really match what a modern day pacifist is. Now, on top of that, the Internet, if you went to Google pacifists or pacifism, you will see lots of pictures. For example, words and texts that say pacifists or someone with the nutty idea that war is a bad thing or that pacifists are weak showing a negative attitude towards pacifism and those who believe in that ideology. It took a long personal journey for me to analyze the, uh, my own identity as a pacifist, and that's what I want to talk about. Why? Why was I so uneasy about outing myself as a pacifist? I had to talk to myself first. Karina, okay, you can do it. You can do it. You can do it. Why did I struggle? It's really a blessing, I think, social media, because we can reach out to other pacifists and share our similar experiences. I realize that many pacifists like me today are okay with outing ourselves, but it is difficult to face people's negative assumptions and attitudes. I even have some friends who s served in the military, and I remember telling them that I was a pacifist, and they said, you've been betraying your friends who are serving their country in war. Oh, that took me aback. I had to think about it for a while. Even Google Images, if you look at Google Images and say pacifists, the reactions are horrible and very negative. This clearly shows the viewpoint that the typical American has here in our country. And that's something that we are often faced with. We are afraid to out ourselves. We are afraid to gather and, and, and get together and talk about what it means to be a pacifist. I also want to talk to you about several other common reactions that we get. Not all pacifists share the same common experience, but we do get similar reactions. Like pacifists are against or anti-government. You slap the soldiers in the face with the words that you say. People will say, why do you hate America? These are common reactions that pacifists get, and that's not true of my, myself nor my other um, pacifist friends. We respect our soldiers and all that they do. We just don't support war. People make assumptions that lead us to doubt ourselves. 
In fact, many pacifists like me right now are afraid to even identify ourselves as such. I am a pacifist because I love my country. I cannot stand idle by and watch wars that cost millions of dollars and kill thousands of people and support that. I could make an argument that people often assume pacifists are not patriots. That's not a, a, a correct assumption, but pacifists are patriots. Hardcore. Hardcore. We stand for our country and we stand behind our soldiers. Inside the pacifist world, there is diversity amongst beliefs, philosophies, and points of view. Some pacifists, in fact, do support war. They support the concept of just war. And some, suppo some pacifists support war for religious beliefs, moral values. There is diversity amongst the pacifist community. We come from different cultural backgrounds. We come from uh, different languages that we use. But we are unified in the fact that we are pacifists. Pacifist is based on one individual's perception. Today's lecture, today, as I speak to you, this is Karina's view of what I myself am as a pacifist. I speak for myself and myself only. I wanted to talk with you today because it is time that we call for a new pacifist movement. I want to take a moment and emphasize that today TEDx is a, not about solutions. It is about spreading ideas. I don't stand in front of you today s saying that I have the perfect solution, but I do have the desire to spark debate about patriotism about military budget. and military budget. budgets. I want to spark more conversation about pacifism itself. That's my goal for speaking with you today. Your view of pacifism pacifists, the assumptions that you may have had going back from the 1960s and the um, peace movements of uh, past generations, those principles, those abstract contracts, concepts of what the world is, don't fit modern day pacifists. My generation have advanced technology. We live in a new technological age and I can't identify with the philosophy of the 1960s. I like to see things happen rapidly now. I'm not interested in growing my hair out and making a sign and marching around buildings or braiding my hair and putting flowers in them. I'm not interested in starving for world peace. I want to see action and I want to see it now. And that is the shared focus of my generation. We do all believe in social justice and that is the mold that pacifists must meet. Pacifism is not, does not look like it did in the 1960s, but it has some of the same underpinnings. The pacifists in the past have struggled to pave the way for those of us today in modern day 2014, but I think the problem today is that many of us pacifists, again, are not... We don't fit the old mold. We don't fit that old mold. World peace is possible, but I'm not sure exactly how. Maybe through the ideology of pacifism, it may take some other, uh, some other movements as well. I have faced a lot of situations because of these negative assumptions and attitudes. Personally, I want to thank those who have paved the way for me, broke down walls and barriers for me to be able to stand here on this stage today. I, I thank those who have come before me, but it's time to create a new path. We cannot continue along the path of those who have come before us. I want to thank them for creating that path, but we need to pave a new way, a new pacifism. With the advancement in technology, military has, a military has nuclear warfare. Countries have access to nuclear technology. That concerns me. That concerns a lot of us. Nuclear war is a possibility. And we also still have that idea that war looks what we saw in those battlefields, right? Where one side heads towards the other side and there is great battle in the middle. That's not what war looks like today. War takes place with night vision goggles, killing the enemy from hundreds and hundreds of yards away. So war has changed, war has evolved. The war of the uh, 60s and 70s and it's not the war of the 21st century. I w if we have a new movement, new war that requires new pacifism. We have to evolve. And we must evolve. We have the largest military, the largest military budget. And that gives us status. America, that gives America power. 
but that also co comes with negativity as well. If we in increase our military technology, if we increase our military strategies and dollars, it's exhausting. that's exhausting. We are the top military power in, I in this world. And my suggestion today is that we do not need to stay on top. We can't. Because if we don't, well, in fact, if we don't stay on top, then someone else will, in fact, take our place. America is a very generous and giving country. We are passionate and very empathetic to other countries. And I'm inspired by that. But when we enter in war, we really could, um, contradict, could ourselves. contradict ourselves. We need to take these passions that we have off the battlefield. Peace is, Peace is our battle cry. We need to band together to unify. Our country cannot continue down this slope. We need to change. We need to do something. I could talk all night, talk about, all night about war, about the soldiers who are coming home. One casualty report that was sent from Congress from 2007 to 2010 showed that there was 103,000 soldiers with PTSD. with PTSD, and those numbers are steadily increasing. We spend more money on wars than we spend on health care and education. War is destroying the nation's fabric. War is destroying and, and, and fractionalizing military families. We're ousting those individuals that live in the countries where we begin these wars. We continue to borrow money to support and sustain these wars. Wars destroy others, other countries' economy and the fabric of other countries. Our military has the best, better technology than in the American classroom. A wise person once told me that we have the Department of the Defense, but we don't have a Department of Peace. And that is the reason why we must call for a new movement of pacifism, a push to allow us to start talking. We need to start talking about our military budget, start dialoguing about our military and the killing of innocent victims that is absolutely happening, how to provide better resources and support for those soldiers who are returning to their homes. We don't have a perfect solution. I told you that earlier. I stand in front of you with a desire to spark conversation. And I believe as Americans, we in fact have an obligation to start this discussion. I love my country. I love peace and I want both. One of my favorite quotes, it's really gonna be hard for me to share with you. Bertrand Russell, Bertrand Russell is credited with this quote. War does not decide who is right. Who decides who is right is the person who is left. Thank you.